Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Before we start, I just want to show you a t-shirt that I'm wearing. It's a new design from Control and Shift, my brand that I co-own with my best mate. And this is to celebrate my 100,000 subscriber count. So it's apparently a picture of me standing in front of my M2 uh, with a number plate that says JA100K. Uh, they're limited numbers, we're making a hundred of them and I believe we've sold about 25 already so head over to Control and Shift to buy one if you like this particular design uh, or anything else on there that you buy is obviously greatly appreciated and helps support my channel. Today I'm in an M8 competition, you might recognise this very car uh, it's the same one that I actually took to Bedford for a track day just before lockdown, I think February sort of time. And in fact, this is one of the original press cars that BMW UK took out to Spain. But an interesting little fact, well it was interesting for me anyway, is the fact that this has actually only done 2,800 miles. And I know I'm responsible for quite a lot of those. And you've got to remember it's an M car, so the first 1,200 miles would have been done by the techies at BMW UK. So, yeah, it hasn't really done that many miles. Anyway, where am I off to? Well, I'm just about to drive through the middle of Isha, and I'm heading off to uh, Daytona go-karts in Sandown Park, which is only about a mile away from here. Some of you have hopefully watched my video where I pitched my M2 competition against a D-Max go-kart and in that video I announced some dates that I was going to host at uh, Daytona. The video went live at about 6pm one evening and by about 10am the next day the two sessions, so 40 places, were completely sold out. So we had to put on another session and that sold out within about 24 hours. So we've actually got three packed sessions down here tonight, each with at least 20 people in them, 22 and some of them, including Patrick and myself. Patrick was one of the sort of main organizers for this. We're gonna have a lot of the straight six track day regulars down here as well so it'd be great to catch up with everyone and there's going to be quite a few handy drivers including a guy called Ollie Bryant who is actually a seasoned professional racing car driver. I'm actually competing in three races tonight so that's 90 minutes in a D-Max go-kart so I hope my neck and my forearms hold out because it's hard work especially if it stays dry like it is now. I'm praying for a little bit of rain because the slick two-stroke go-karts on a damp circuit is just perfect but if it stays dry it stays dry at least then I can use my massive weight as an excuse for not winning but I really hope to make it onto the podium on at least one of the races up the three so it should be really interesting I'm gonna show you some highlights from each race and uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just enjoy today and enjoy this fantastic venue that, as you can see, is actually within Sandown Park horse racing course. It's a really, really cool venue. I've been coming here for a long, long time now. So let's go and have some fun. Okay, so loads of really cool people in the car park. It's definitely gonna be busy tonight. <laughs> Lots going on, but unfortunately, yeah, the sun has literally baked the tarmac dry. So we're looking at complete dry course. I'll spin you around now so you can have a look. There you go. Dry as a bone. Anyone that gets on the podium tonight, we've got some control and shift merchandise that we're not going to sell you, we're actually going to give you. So, uh, so yeah, a little bit of an extra bonus. And also, uh, we're going to do another one of these on the 22nd of July. So if you enjoy today, um, then come and see me afterwards or whatever. Hopefully it'll be online either later today or, or tomorrow. But yeah, thanks a lot for coming and uh, I'll see you out there on the circuit. Thank you, Joe. So, Joe. Perfect, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Oh, you want you want some of the wet, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll do a little rain dance over here, all right? Thanks. You okay, 
The format of these DMAX sprint races is a 10 minute practice slash qualifying followed by a 20 minute race that started using a rolling grid start. I'm heading out now to start my practice slash qualifying and the aim for me is to spend the first lap getting some heat into the slick tyres and just get my head around the car on the circuit and then literally second lap onwards trying to set a reasonably quick time. I do have an advantage here over many that turned up on the night because I've been here many times before so I know the circuit very well but saying that it does change day to day especially when the weather changes but today it was particularly warm and the circuit actually seems to have quite a lot of grip. Let's join me for my quickest lap. You might be on a really quick lap and then you'll come into a yellow zone or you know people waving the yellow flags where you've got to slow down. So just like an F1 you might be on a very very good lap and you get caught up in something that's completely out of your control so you really need to try and maximize and bank any lap that you can because that counts towards the actual qualifying session. Hopefully you enjoyed that lap, I know it's mostly wind noise and not much to listen to but that was the best lap I could put together and it actually qualified me third which I was pretty happy with. I think we all qualified very close, the top four or five of us were extremely close, um, but I could see that I was potentially in with a chance of getting on the podium in the first race. Now let's head on into the race and the rolling start and I'll show you a couple of highlights from the race. As you can see, I actually managed to get a really good start off the line, which is very unusual for me, mostly down to the fact that I do weigh about 105 kilos and a rolling start for me is, is always a bad thing. But I managed to get the jump on Patrick and actually end up in second place into turn one and two, which is great. Uh, from there on, it was a race of attrition. There was lots of yellow flags, lots of back markers crashing. And in the end, I ended up battling with Ollie Bryant for a number of laps towards the end of the race. He did have the edge on me for sure, but I managed to catch him a couple of times with traffic ahead and incidents that were happening ahead where I managed to just pull in that couple of seconds. But in the end, he uh, ended up with the final podium place and third position. Uh, which is where he definitely belonged and I'm sure if he stayed for another session he would have absolutely kicked my ass. But it was great battling with him and and it was it was a really good race. But I was already feeling a bit fatigued by the end of race one, so worried what I was going to feel like for race two and race three. After 20 minutes of action pack racing, Charlie Newton Derby ended up taking the win just in front of the one and only Patrick Whelan, Patrick Films, who helps me with all my videos. And then Oliver Bryant was third, as he's just seen battling with me, and I was about a second and a half behind him. So it was a reasonably close race, and obviously gutted to miss the podium, but at the same time, the three guys that got up there were well deserved and uh, it was a packed 20 odd field so fun times and on to race two. The second race was really interesting and once again packed full of amazing talent. To put things into perspective Patrick put it on pole in the first race with a 48 flat. JJ Aston put it on pole in the second race with a 46.6. That's nearly a second and a half quicker 
on a lap that's under 50 seconds, so massive time difference. And in fact, Graham, who was in second place, did a 47 flat, so still a second quicker than Patrick in the first race. So I knew that I was up against it, but I didn't know what the times were, and I managed to qualify in sixth, and I was a bit disappointed with that. But in fact, my qualifying time was nearly a tenth of a second quicker than my first race's qualifying time. I just didn't realise that the talent in front of me were even quicker. I didn't get the best of starts, but then I managed to crawl back a few places, and I was kind of battling in the fifth to sixth position for most of the race. The first few laps I was feeling very fatigued, and I also discovered that my cart was different to the one that I was in the first race. It seemed to lack a bit of speed down the straights and I was easily getting overtaken by some people down the straights, even people that looked like they were similar sort of weight to me. But through the corners it was very quick and it felt really nimble. That's kind of what you find, all the carts are pretty much identical on a full lap time. but. Some feel a bit better handling wise, some seem to break a little bit better, but then some seem to accelerate a bit better. So it always kind of, yeah, gives you a bit of randomness that you're never sure what's going to happen. And my particular car definitely did feel a little bit slower down the straights, but it really gripped well in the corners and allowed me to pull off some half decent passing moves. Unfortunately, the battery ran flat on my GoPro about halfway through this race, but it wasn't too dramatic towards the end. I ended up in a fairly lonely sixth place, which when I looked at the times after it had finished, <laughs> I was actually not proud of, but I was happy with, and I didn't realize, or I must have underestimated how quick the guys were that were in front of me. No surprise that JJ ended up winning the race, but in fact, he only won just under a second in front of Graham. Both of them getting a 47.5 as an average lap time over the 20 minutes. That is just so impressive when you factor in the slower laps that we have yellow flags and stuff. So those two were in a league of their own. And then Stephen came in a very respectable third place. And I ended up back in sixth feeling pretty sore and pretty exhausted by this stage and really trying to figure out how I was going to last for the final race. Hey, boy. Hey. Good, man. Sorry, I didn't realise. What's that? We don't want the rain. No, we do want the rain. Take your time, Joe. Take your time. Yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> The third and final race was so much fun and in fact the fatigue that I thought I was going to have seemed to disappear. It was almost like I'd warmed up and all my limbs started working properly again. I spent most of qualifying battling it out with my good friend Max Williams. We were swapping places pretty much for the whole of the 10 minutes and I actually managed to put it on pole with a 47.620 but it was so close in the top five and in fact my good friend Daniel Mitchell was in second place with a 47.665. That's literally a couple of thousandths of a second behind me. And then we had Graham who did really well in the second race. He qualified third. Max Williams in fourth. And Patrick in fifth with a 47.968. So Patrick was just over three tenths of a second behind me in qualifying time but yet he was down in fifth so it just gives you an idea of how close the field were. I actually managed to get a really good start and pretty much jump everyone off the line and led into turn one which I've never done before. I think I have qualified first once before at Daytona but I'd always end up in second or third by the first corner. It was really nice leading and yeah, it just takes the pressure off when you've got all this clean air in front. I'm speeding this bit up by 20 times, I think, just because it was me lapping on my own. It was lovely, actually. And then I would slowly start catching the back markers and lapping people. There was a few yellow flags out where people had had incidents, but thankfully nothing too serious. And then eventually I started to catch the faster people, so the mid-pack and 
the passes became a bit more difficult as the race went on, obviously, as you as you caught the faster people. Here, I think I'm catching up to my good friend Ash, and uh, as you can see, his pace is, is pretty good, and I had to put up a couple of decent passing moves to get past uh, some of my other friends and people that came down. It was, it was really fun. But it was all about keeping consistent and keeping my head down and just trying to put in decent laps after laps after laps. And in fact, I managed to build a lead in the end of almost 27 seconds to second place, which was really, really awesome. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that second and third and fourth were battling for a few laps. And when that happens and you're out front on your own, you just build that lead. And such a nice feeling as you go over the line there and uh, take the win. It was awesome. Felt really, really good. Here you can see us getting our podium picture. Normally they would use a podium, but because of the COVID-19 restrictions, we were getting them on the track. It was really nice to take the win in front of David Neal and my good friend Daniel Mitchell in a very close third position. It was a fantastic day's racing. I was really feeling it at this stage as I got out of the car and I've actually spent the past 24 hours or so <laughs> feeling a little bit achy, but, um, but at the same time still got a big grin on my face. Well, that was awesome, really cool, amazing turnout loads of really familiar faces some new faces um and yeah maybe don't try three sessions in a row uh, i don't know how i've managed to do that but i'm going to be sore for a few days massive thanks to patrick behind the camera and obviously huge thanks once again to daytona um, i feel like this is my second home at the moment i love it down here um, make sure you do check out the link below and uh, join us on the 22nd we're probably going to hold two sessions down there uh, down here um it's yeah it's great fun it really is it's a good laugh and everyone as far as i know everyone like 65 people or whatever's been down here have really enjoyed themselves so i'm gonna finish this nice cold drink get out of this horrible sweat box and um drive the lovely m8 competition home thanks for watching guys give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and i'll see you soon cheers oh where's my medal yeah Oh, did you win, Joe? I didn't know. You hadn't uh, told me. Oh, yeah. Oh, did I, did I mention? No, yeah. Oh, is this going? Is this? Oh, is, it, is that flashing? It's live. Oh, is oh, this it's going live, in? Yeah. Oh, I'm embarrassing. <laughs> oh, oh Mate, wait. Get, what's this in my trinket. helmet? Oh, one second. Got a oh, fit in your me. helmet. That's impressive. Oh. Do, do I need to talk about the first two races where I didn't do very well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>